All right, folks, we're going to be looking at the euro dollar here. I'm going to show you an optimal trade entry that is just formed. And we're going to give you a scenario, say you're, you're trading and you're trying to add some pips to your bottom line here. And let's assume that you're thinking that your dollar is going to draw up in sympathy like the British pound did this morning. All right, and I'm shading this area over right here to show you that we did drop into the optimal trade entry. Right now is a buy, and your stop would be just underneath two pips under. And that's the framework here. So whether this runs to target or not, let's assume that that's what you're going to be using. Now I'll put a trade on to walk you through two scenarios because we have something that's forming here that's potentially an opportunity for me to teach. And if you look at the dollar index, we have a low then a lower low and we've retraced since so the market ideally if it trades down it makes a lower low one dollar that's when it needs to really expand lower with big ranges if it fails to do that that's going to be problematic and i'll explain it if it does that but if it takes off and runs lower extremely fast that'll send euro dollar higher and i'll manage the trade in euro obviously based on that now without taking trade this is what your framework would be, obviously. And if you look at it, we got about, uh, looks like you could go to 1360. That would be like first objective, 1360, then 1380 institutional, and then big figure, and then sweeping. So I'm gonna show you, it's the same account, and this is all pantomiming the suggestion on my part how you would mentally prepare not that you would actually do this i'm not saying that anyone should go out there and try to get a funded account but to answer those individuals that were showing an interest in that and how i might do it if i were starting out all over again this would be kind of like the approach i would do i wouldn't try to be doing a whole lot of trades i'd be trying to add on a little bit each time and there is an entry right there i'm only risking one and a half percent I'll show you the business here. So you can see the candle, the entry was on, and where the stop is. Okay, and I adjusted it so it's two pips below that low, like I mentioned. I gotta get that text out of here. All right, so now what I would like to see is obviously the market to drop lower on dollar index and move higher on euro and i'd like to see it expand with large ranges in euro going higher now it's important because we have already created two short-term lows on dollar and it looks like we're getting run out another lower low that has to happen with large ranges moving down on dollar and the euro needs to explode with a lot of big up candles if it doesn't do that Okay, that's problematic, and that's like a warning sign that your trade is probably going to peter out. That means it's going to run out of momentum and likely to consolidate or even reverse. Because that criteria is in this framework here where the dollar's making potentially lower low, lower low, and then another third lower low. So in other words, we're taking out external range liquidity two times, even though it's a three minute chart, we've already moved down a, a good bit from overnight. So it's Thursday, it might create a market reversal profile. And that's the reason why if we see two steps lower for external range liquidity in an intraday chart, like we're showing here on dollar, it needs to really explode and, and basically show follow through and momentum moving in your favor. If it starts to stall or fails to make large ranges, 
that is a time for you to potentially take something off the trade or completely take the trade off. And depending upon how we see price deliver, I'll explain you know how I interpret it. So far, it's just meandering around, not really showing a whole lot of interest to go higher, but we'll give it time. I'd like to see if I can bump it to 12,000 on the equity. That would be 20% return for just a few weeks. And again, just illustrating that you're not trying to hit home runs. You're not trying to win competitions with this type of trading. If you're working with a funded account, you really want to be selective. You don't want to be trying to trade every single day and you're just trying to add a little bit more each time. And if the trades don't show you the signatures that would really promote a winner early on, you have to be willing to cut bait. And cut bait means just basically kill the trade, save yourself mental capital, remove yourself from risk, and just wait for another setup. I'm kind of hoping it actually does fail the rally. Like if it moves just a little bit above 1350 and fails there, if the dollar makes that lower low. So it'll be like a, a third short term low forming on dollar. If that happens, then I'm going to show you how to determine when you should kill your trade because that's a skill set no one teaches in any other mentorships and books and things, but it's a skill set you need to know. But if it runs up there and sweeps at 114, I'm going to be tickled that <laughs> that happened as well. Either way, I, I'm okay. Okay, so we have a lower low on dollar index. I'm going to tighten that stop loss up now because we do not see any real rampant runs on euro higher. Get ready to touch the mid figure level. It needs to really start showing some strength in euro with large ranges and it's really not doing it. See that? It's just really just lethargic. Where the dollar index has a really nice sharp decline and making a lower low. Euro is just, you know, it's not showing any willingness to want to run. We'll give it a few more minutes and see if it wants to expand. As long as the dollar stays underneath its most recent swing low, I'll give it an opportunity to run higher on Euro. Okay, we cleared the mid-figure, a little bit of expansion on Euro. The dollar, see the difference with the dollar? The dollar is really nice trading lower and euro is just showing it's not aggressive about wanting to move higher. And if we have two stages of external range liquidity in the dollar index, that means short term lows when they form that sell side liquidity, it keeps getting attacked. And then another short term low forms and then there's sell side liquidity building below that. And then it's attacked right now. And Euro is not showing a lot of elevation on the upside. It's just, it's stalling. It should have really nice large ranges in here and dollars should be falling out of bed. And neither one of those things are occurring. So because of that, I'm going to tighten that stop up real, real tight now. So that way if it does come back, it's going to be such a marginal loss. It won't be any real work for me to repair it. And that'll be a lesson also because eventually... If I push this enough over the next couple weeks, I'm going to have a losing trade. And I'll let you know and show you how you deal with that. All right, dollar index still pressing lower. Euro not giving me what I'm looking for. It's really lethargic. Now, based on this, you could, if you're looking, just add like 15, 20 pips to your account and be done 
and just completely remove yourself from the trade. You, you could take your profits if it can touch that 11360 you know, you can collapse it there or put a limit order at uh, 11358 and anything above that you can collapse or in this case it would be 59.4 and that would be 20 pips for this so now i'm going to show you how to manage this assuming that you don't want to take any partials off so you're holding it for everything or collapsing it you know if it turns around and shows you signs that you don't want to be in the trade anymore so i'm going to show you here with these lines on the dollar index let me clone these here and put them down on each respective swing low and i already know i want to collapse the trade but i want you to see visually what i'm referring to so on the dollar index that swing low that uppermost we traded through that one then we created a swing, a swing low again and we swept below that now we're beneath it so i don't want to hang on. explaining this that way it's not an afterthought There you go. So what I'm suggesting here is because we went down below two swing lows after moving down a lot and Euro is not really showing the signature I was looking for, which would be rising in sympathy with British pound because British pound really popped up today by them raising their little interest rate. Not by much, but it was raised nonetheless. Euro has shown no willingness to do that. Okay. So this means you have to either decide whether you're going to hold on to the trade and let your stop get stopped out, which at this point is not good. Okay, you're giving away equity. Now I can close the trade here, take $161 out, add equity high on the trade of I think $203 uh, as it traded into the 11360. It flashed up in there. Um, I don't know exactly what the actual high high was, but I remember seeing that figure on the lower right hand corner. But how do you know when to get out of a trade that you know is likely to turn on you? That's what I'm showing you here. Even though it's in profit right now, even though it's moved, okay, what indicates that? What gives you that warning sign that you probably are in something that's going to turn around? Well, it's Thursday. It's New York. We've already moved down. And we're not seeing the follow through in Euro that you would like to see or I would like to see. And we've taken out two external range liquidity pools on dollar and in euro and no real expansion. So it should be exploding higher in euro and wilting quickly with large ranges on the dollar index. Is it doing it? No, it's not doing it. So this is where traders like when I first started, if I was in a trade that was winning, but I didn't see what I wanted to see it move and you know start running away in my profit when it stopped moving in my direction and started stalling, I would just hope and hope and ignore all the warning signs where we're seeing it right now. This is what it looks like. Waning momentum after two areas of external range liquidity have been 
purged. So now what that means is the dollar index is likely to trade back higher and have a deeper retracement. And my stop would be taken on the euro dollar long. So why give up all of the, I mean, I put myself in the trade, right? I put some time into this. So why let it completely take the stop when I know that the probabilities have shifted? So I don't want to be in this trade anymore because I don't think it's likely to continue in my favor. So I'm going to close it here. Okay. And there it is. So now what I just illustrated is yes, this was a bread and butter 20 pip setup using optimal trade entry, draw on liquidity to the big figure with the sympathy move that's expected because of the British pound. It offered 20 pips. The perils of not taking partials is illustrated here. So if you don't want to take partials, you lose the opportunity of banking 20 pips. I've taken what looks like around 10 pips. So we'll see at the, the end here. I'll show you the, the history tab, but this account has now in just a few weeks. And again, not a lot of trades. They're not big barn burner, uh, heavy leverage things, but 18% is respectful like if you do that every other month you don't have to do that every single month if you do that every other month and you have a funded account that's decent you know that's putting bread in your pocket so and again that's assuming you're consistent i'm not suggesting by any means that all of you because you watch my videos will become consistent it takes a lot of work and effort on your part but in a way, I'm kind of glad it did this because it gives me an opportunity to teach something that unless there is a real event unfolding in the marketplace, because it's not the same thing if I show you something after the fact, okay? If I can tell you what it looks like while data is moving and I put a trade on and it's the same account, I'm not trying to you know, show something in a different account and all these other things, are, I'm, 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 there's no sneakiness or deception being here. Okay, I'm showing you what it is you learn from me, and I'll show you the history here. Okay, and I'll scroll up down here. It's 16th, and you can see there's the buy. That's the order number that you watched pop up. And then I closed it, and it's like $92.50 or something. And again, don't focus on that money. Okay, focus on the fact that the trade hasn't moved in my favor. Now, retail sees a bull flag on that euro dollar. I don't. I see it coming back down into that original optimal trade entry and then maybe even wilting even into the consequent quotient of that buy side and balance, sell side and efficiency. But look where we're at here. So that's why it didn't have any lot of momentum basically because we're near the highest premium that's been in since the run since yesterday okay so think about how many times you've been in a trade where you had open profit paper profit and you haven't realized the gain yet because your trade hasn't been closed how many times have you been in those and then watched it turn around on you it sucks so Taking a look at the indices here. They look like they're going to sell off a little bit today. Take a look at S&P. Yeah, it looks like it's going to go down a little bit more today, too. Hmm. Because it's Thursday and because I didn't get the trade that I wanted to unfold I don't want to push it and this is something that's really important especially as a new trader okay if you have a funded account now let's see here I'll go back to pound whoa look at that that's gonna sell off consequent encroachment let's measure that here it's gonna go right into this you ever notice how it just wiggles around and won't give you your level? It always does that to me. 
I'm going to go in here and actually change it. There you go. So I think it's going to draw back down into that. That would be a short right there. But I'm not going to take the trade. All right, so it's probably going to have something similar to that consequent encroachment on British Pound. We'll look at the euro dollar. I'll add that one too. Because if it isn't going lower on dollar, it's going to retrace. And if it's going to retrace on dollar, that's going to drag British Pound down. And it's going to drag the euro dollar down. And it's going to pull back down into the consequent encroachment of its buy side imbalance. Pound has more range, it looks like, obviously, because of the elevation it's had. But uh, that's a sell there. You can use the stop above the uh, recent swing high. Euro dollar. Let's drop down in here. All right, you see that buy side imbalance, sell side efficiency on euro. I already feel good about what I did by collapsing that trade. Here's the buy side imbalance. It's also an efficiency and we're consequent encroachment. We'll draw that on here. Same thing, trying to make it match that 50 level on the fib. That's where it's going to draw down into. Okay, because it's Thursday. We've probably already made the high of the day. And everything I just taught you relative to, and there's the projected high. Right in here. So it wasn't really willing to show a whole lot of movement beyond that. And again, dollar index took two stages of external range liquidity out on a Thursday. It's already moved down 20 pips spread, but uh, that's what it would look like uh, if you take the profits off at 20 pips. But if you make the mistake of not doing that and it's Thursday and you hold past the ideal exit, how do you know? What does it look like? Well, that's what I've shown you here today. And a little shorter block right there at the optimal trade entry, which framed the whole context of why I was expecting to see it rally higher. So these are like lessons that you really can't appreciate unless you watch it live like this and see it. And why should it be? Why should it be true? Like, why should the dollar index turn around here and go higher because we've already been pressed down rather deep and it's Thursday day of week. We don't really have a whole lot of news on Friday tomorrow and we don't see the sympathy run higher on Euro with the same magnitude that pound dollar did because of that Euro is going to drive down into that consequent encroachment. Now, you're probably going to ask, well, if you know that, why aren't you taking a short? Because I'm teaching discipline. And if this were your trade, okay, here's what's going to happen. You're going to have all kinds of chemicals releasing into your bloodstream because you were in a trade. You had potentially $200 plus on this account balance, which would be, it's not big, obviously, but it's respectful. And you didn't take it off. Now, I'm speaking in the sense that you were me. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you're watching the trade and you see that it's likely to fail and you're able to get out of that trade and dollar should really start to move higher here. If that happens, you're going to feel like, well, I cheated myself out of profit. So let me get in here and do something else. You may not see things objectively like I'm looking at it here. I know with a great deal of confidence that the algorithm is going to want to draw back down into that level that is consequent encroachment. There's range there. I can make pips on that and I can do more than I showed with the initial long with the optimal trade entry. But I want you, if you get a trade that doesn't pan out and you're late in the week, don't rush to go back in again. This is discipline. This is forging responsibility and it promotes barriers to you blowing yourself out in the account. Like you don't lose your mind. You don't beat yourself up. You don't regret anything. 
Don't regret anything because every transaction is new experience and that new experience is going to mold you into whatever trader you're going to evolve into. You have to allow it to add to you and proper reflection, not regret, will allow you to trim away all the things that are negative but retaining the mistakes that you observe that led you into that. Now, I could have made a mistake and let this thing stay right open, rather, without moving my stop, and I'd be right in there where I got in at. That's not good. Not on Thursday, not after it's made one, two, three swing highs. Okay, so what's occurring here is a pattern that is taught in street smarts book by linda rashk and larry connors and it's called three indians many times it's referred to as the three drives pattern okay but what i see in it is the algorithm has dropped down one dollar one two three times so it's allowed people to try to fish a bottom so when they buy it what are they doing they're putting sell stops in there that's exactly where smart money is going to do what buy back on cover they're short so they do it in one short-term low and they run that out and then they create a little short-term swing low again and then the algorithm drops down one more time allowing the traders to do what pair up their covering of a short position by buying it back with willing sellers at a lower price that's why i suggested that this is probably not going to pan out and how you can change gears in the marketplace okay you see it before it happens you have to understand what's going on Okay, same account, it's not 15 different other charts, it's not other scenarios here. Nothing else would make sense with what I'm doing here. I'm outlining it, I'm giving you the reasons. Okay, and by having those reasons up front, it's proven logic. So hopefully you found this insightful. Until tomorrow, be safe.